shot selection. Did you see it getting better in those two overtimes? Yeah, I mean, I, I just thought, I mean, we were trying to go through Drew and Trey with a lot of what we were doing because Ola was fouled out. So um, at that point in the game, kind of late in regulation and overtimes, I mean, the same thing Purdue was going through. And they were going through Hammonds and Theron Johnson. So, you know, those that's a time you really go through your best players. And um, I just thought, I mean, I thought Drew got some good looks in, in the overtime and even regulation, some couple jump hooks he just didn't make. And then he made some big shots in the second overtime. And uh, But yeah, I mean, I think we're evolving where our shot selection has been better. You know, we, we still haven't shot it great. And um, I keep talking about the law of averages. Uh, hopefully that rings in at some point uh, the last uh, 11 games. But what does it mean to have Dave back? Oh, I mean, it's great, you know, and, um, you know, he's been cleared to, to do full activity. Um, and so hopefully he can get a couple good practices under his belt uh, before Saturday. And then, um, you know, just to have another, he's a veteran guy. He's played in a lot of games. And uh, he's, I think, seeing the way we're playing, he's anxious to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, with our depth issues, I mean, just having another guy who can get out there and handle the ball and help is going to be huge for us. You guys in Michigan are the two slowest paced teams in the Big Ten. They had a lot of success yesterday against Iowa, sort of slowing them down. Did you watch that game at all? Or no? Yeah, no, we study, watched it live and then uh, watched it again today just to kind of study the film. And uh, I thought they did a great job. I think uh, Iowa's been averaging in the mid 80s. They held them to 68 point or whatever in the 60s and thought they did a really good job of picking and choosing their spots. Um, you know, Michigan's an outstanding team, so you know that that didn't surprise me, especially playing at home. You know, them being able to win, but I, I thought they did as good a job as maybe anybody at uh, you know taking away Iowa's transition. You know, that's that's huge, and that's what they killed us with the first game. You know, they got out and the one being off live ball turnovers, uh, and two, you know, on runouts on not only missed shots but also on made field goals. They're as good as it gets in in turning defense into offense. So. The number one priority against these guys is going to be to get back and try as good as we can to have them play against our set defense. The last few games, you guys have actually been really good in transition on transition defense. Um, is that something that you guys have talked about tactically, or is that just a matter of you know hustling back on defense? No, I mean tactically. I mean we're we're sending more guys back. Um, you know, it's it was part of the you know, as, as we decided, or not decided, but as we evolved into kind of what we needed to do to be competitive, one of the things was we had to take away transition. I mean, we were just getting killed uh, those first three games, giving up so many layups and dunks. And when you do that, teams are gonna make other shots better because they see the ball go in the basket with dunks and layups. So, you know, one of our things has been to get back and try to take away layups and dunks. And um, so we've been consciously trying not to send as many guys to the offensive boards just so we can get back and try to set our defense. Coach, during the team's recent success, how important has Trey Demp's offense been on the bench? Oh, it's been huge. Um, you know, not, not only just his offense in general, but I think his ability to score in clutch situations, you know, uh, against Indiana and against Purdue. Uh, he hit, I mean, he had two huge threes in the Purdue game when we were down three to kind of get us back to level. and. I think you're seeing with him, he wants the ball in those situations and he's confident and really he's the best guy we have on the team in terms of creating offense when things break down. And, you know, the teams in this league, they do a good job scouting. They take away your stuff. They're well coached. They're tough. And you got to have guys who can be playmakers. And he's really emerged as a guy for us to do those things. And with Sobo, what are your plans for integrating him back into the rotation? You know, I don't think there's any like specific plans. Um, you know, other than just kind of take it as it comes. I mean, we, we need him, there's no question. I mean, Jershon was cramping up the last game, a big reason he's had to play the whole game. So, you know, I think initially, you know, he hasn't done anything for a couple of weeks. So, you know, to expect him to play 30 minutes or, I mean, he's got to get him get his game legs back and, and, and find his rhythm and, and kind of get back into the swing of things. So, you know, I think we'll figure it out together and uh, how we can get him in there and, and, and be able to help us and, and give what he can give. For this year, Sobo is a guy who played 35, 40 minutes a game. Do you want him playing that much again? Even the beginning you know, of this year, he's playing a lot. Do you want him playing that many minutes or no? We'll just see how it goes. You know, I mean, I, I think, look, I, I'm not afraid to play my best players big minutes. I mean, you guys have seen that, and, and we don't have a ton of guys. You know, with him being back, we'll have nine scholarship guys. So, um, you know, I expect him to be a key part of what we're doing. He has been for, for two and a half years. And now that we're getting him back, though, we got to, it's, he hasn't been with us for a few weeks. So, um, you know, just for him, for us, kind of integrating him back into the swing of things, it'll be a process. And I know he's excited. We're excited to have him back, and, and he'll definitely be able to help us down the stretch. Trey, Trey mentioned that uh, since the last Iowa game, the, the team's learned how to fight. How important is that for them moving forward? 
Well, I mean, I think it's huge. I mean, I think in sports and whatever sport you're playing, I mean, that's the number one thing is to learn how to compete at the highest level in the fight and the battle. And sometimes that can overcome some shortcomings on X's and O's or executions, just your ability to fight on every play. And, you know, I think not only have they learned that, but they've had some success with it. So I think it goes hand in hand. I, you know, I talked about it was very important for us, you know, to have a little success because they're given everything they have. And if you continually do that and, and nothing's being shown for it, you can get discouraged. And I think the guys have seen some success with the way we're playing and they're starting to believe in what we're doing. And uh, it's been fun to watch our growth. Coach, for Alex Ola, what kind of progression have you seen from the beginning of the year to the last few games where he's really been kind of a defensive force? I think his confidence is the main thing. Um, you know, you could see his talent level, you know, when I first got here and you work him out a few times and, you know, you see he's got a nice touch, he's got moves, he's a big guy. Um, but I, I didn't sense that he was as confident probably as he should have been because he's a young player and uh, he got knocked back like a lot of young big guys do. And, you know, I think the first part of the year was more the same. And I really think the Wisconsin game, even though we lost big, he scored 23 points and had a lot of success. And I think that's kind of carried on from that night. I've noticed kind of a new guy and he's demanding the ball more on offense. He wants it. And his defense is really where he's grown. You know, he's, he's, he's being a presence at our basket. He's rebounding better, but he's making it hard to score down there. And, and that's what we've needed out of him. And he's been tremendous in that aspect. In the second half against Purdue, you guys ran a lot of uh, screen the screener sets um, to free up guys for open jump shots. Is that um, a new wrinkle in the offense or is that something you just noticed to do it against Purdue or is that something you guys want to keep using? No, I mean, we've had that. Um, you know, it's kind of like when you get into a game and we, you know, we have an off, we, as you go throughout the year, you add so much all the time that you're always adding new rent, like you end up having a bigger playbook than you probably even think. So uh, it was something we called in the game and we got a great shot on it. So we kind of went back to it and we were having some success with that play. And I don't think it's any different than other teams do. You find that uh, like Purdue started having some success against us at the end on a specific set and they went to it four or five times in a row. So, you know, it's something we've had. Uh, we were getting open looks, so we just kind of went back to it and we were able to get some open shots. But it's good movement for us to get that kind of cutting uh, and get that kind of action because we struggle creating off the dribble. So we have to help each other get shots. And so we try to do some things where, you know, getting that kind of movement can lend itself to getting better shots.